America, take a good look at your beloved candidates. They're nothing but hideous space reptiles. Oh. It's true. We are aliens. But what are you going to do about it? It's a two-party system. You have to vote for one of us. He's right. This is a two-party system. Well, I believe I'll vote for a third-party candidate. Go ahead. Throw your vote away. <laughs> Appearing on this week of the book, Doc Eon exposes the globalist agenda for the future. Joe Allen explains scientism. The techno elites believe that science and technology, not God, are the means to human salvation. Scientism very basically is the belief that scientific inquiry and discovery will answer all of the existential questions in human life. All those questions which religion seeks to satisfy, scientism uh, holds up material discovery as the uh, the means of salvation, the means of transcendence. Elon Musk has talked about implanting an AI microchip into our brain. Do you really see that happening? What would that mean for humanity? Uh, uh, he foresees a potential future in which he said hundreds of millions or billions of people would be implanted with these in order to guide AI according to human will. Uh, they begin to explain by their words and their actions and their behavior who they really are. Again, you can call yourself alien all you want. They're really a demon disguising themselves as alien. And part of that is because they've trained us to be anti-biblical, anti-God. We don't want to believe in supernatural. Don't talk about demons. You're a wacko. I don't, we believe in science nowadays, you know, follow the science, all yeah, that follow mantra, science, blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. So they still got to do their dirty deed and that's what they're doing. So they just, oh, we're not, we're not demons. People freak out and be afraid. That's too obvious. We're an alien here. It's the same thing, but they, they tell you that. And part of the reason why we know that they tell you that is, you know, you mentioned the communication aspect, right? You're supposed to be this higher technologically advanced race. And you'd think that if you're here to help us and you're, with this information we desperately need at this time in mankind's crisis, which is what they say, uh, well, how about send me an email or let's come down and have a conference, you know, like we're doing right now. Hey, let's do a podcast. So let's have a cup of coffee. Let's talk about that. You know, uh, uh, t send me a text, you know, something. Oh, no. The only way we can get this information is they literally have to, a person has to get into an altered state of consciousness and these beings come inside of them and they speak through them. Excuse me. That's demonic. That's a demonic practice that God forbids because it's a mediumship. That's when demons possess somebody. And that's what these things do. It's like, you're supposed to be this higher advanced race, but you're resorting to an occult technique that God forbids because it's demonic. That's a big clue. Another thing is they want full on possession of people. They want to take over people's bodies. And typically when, when that happens, sure enough, just like the biblical account, when you see people possessed, they go insane. They go further away from God. They propagate evil and things that lead people away from God and or kill themselves. And that's the exact same thing when people have encounters with these things. The other thing too is what's um, really wild and I'm convinced only the Bible gives us the answer. But of all things for these critters to do to people when they abduct them, uh, the uh, uh, in secular ufologists even admit this, is oftentimes the people are subjected to sexual experimentation. It's very common. Uh, and that has just been out there for a long time. As crazy as that sounds, you're like, well, what, what's that? How's that a demon? We'll go back to what? Genesis 6. And you got the sons of God, the, the demons that cohabit with. So you're dealing with the Nephilim issue. Now, the reason why that's important is because what did Jesus say in Matthew 24, 37? As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. What was going on in the days of Noah? So that we know that it's getting close to the second coming of Jesus Christ. Well, uh, number one, Jesus said there in Matthew 24, it was a time, again, people were scoffing about God's coming judgment. They were eating, drinking, business as usual, giving in marriage. All. That's our world today. You and I try to tell them about, hey, man, better get right with God. Yeah. I got to get to work. What are you, a wacko? I'm getting married next week. I don't have time for this, right? And all that stuff. So that's here today. The Genesis account in 6 tells us another sign of the days of Noah is it was so evil that the thoughts of man were continually wicked all the time and it grieved God's heart. Well, I believe we're there as well. 
selfish the thoughts of people. You can't go anywhere. There's evil everywhere. You can't, you know, as a Christian, you almost want to blindfold yourself and not just your eyes, your ears. It's wickedness everywhere. And people think it. It's just so we're there. But it's that third aspect that people kind of shy away from or have never been taught or just skip over and they don't realize what they're reading. But it talks about how these demonic creatures were mingling with the daughters of men. Out came some sort of a hybrid issue. If that, supernatural interference that involved genetic manipulation. E exactly. And so, right. Which was sexual, obviously. Well, exactly. And, and so then again, go back to these guys. Of all things you're doing to people? Yeah, weird, huh? Is again, sex where have I heard that before? Genesis, Nephilim, demons, right? You're doing the same thing. And the reason why that's important and the reason why we deal with that, as crazy as that sounds, because Jesus said it, I didn't. You're going to see a repeat of this behavior right before I come back and put a stop to all of it, basically, right? And so, and so that's another sign, though, that you're dealing with some sort of a, a demonic entity because they're doing the same thing that the demons of old did. They're doing it again today. Uh, the way they communicate, uh, you'd think you'd give us something we could use, uh, but you're here to debunk Christianity. Uh, say that uh, Jesus is uh, came from the ETs. That's where he got his power. Satan's a good guy. Followed the Antichrist kingdom. I mean, that's all. really how about a cure for cancer, right? How about yeah, solve exactly. some world crisis? You come all the way over here to debunk, to try to debunk only the biblical version of creation, the existence, salvation alone through Jesus Christ, the need of redemption, and then you promote the Antichrist kingdom. You say Satan's a good guy, and then you cohabitate like demons of old in the Genesis six account. Really? Okay, I get it that this is a demonic deception, but where is it going? Bingo. Explain away the mass abduction. Now, see, that's what they're going to tell the world. The world will be told, oh, is it UFOs, O's and aliens? That's what we saw with the mass abduction. You know, and uh, it's interesting, too, because the, 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 the whether all the movies that we've seen, again, uh, the is happening it, it, it's conditioning everybody to think in terms of of these other big options L let me ask you this uh so on the cover of your book or you, you got a, a craft there yeah uh do you anticipate um a, a craft appearing and being as physical as this table well there's there's two things and we actually demonstrate either scenario and um because i'm gives i'm based on the research based more, most importantly on the scripture um, and the character of Satan and the demons, uh, but but again, also their own messages they're telling people, they are preparing themselves to explain away the rapture. I have no doubt about that. And we document that very thoroughly. And um, But it wouldn't surprise me uh, that right after the rapture, to further get people to buy into that lie, that they don't appear. You know, to, to use the phrase, uh, when we disappear, they appear. Yeah, LA always says, we go up, they show up. Right, exactly. Number one, uh, they for years people have talked about something called Project Bluebeam, and where the governments around the world have the ability to do these mass holograms uh, that they could do. And so imagine when people are visibly leaving and then they go into the clouds, okay, they're at their biblical rapture. But then right after that, next thing you know, you see around the world ships of massive size, like citywide size, coming out of the sky and just hovering there in the air right right afterwards right and you're going like could, could they have that technology yeah and just the declassified the rule is we are at least 50 years behind actual technology and that includes flying technology uh that they could use so whether it's a project blue beam, blue beam hologram that hologram, appears after the rapture not, not physically right? real or, or government military aircraft around the world that dare i say is alien like and but it's legit you can touch it right that could be utilized as well uh and dare i say people out of the occult uh the new world order folks uh they they want a one world government they want a one world religion they want a one world ruler to govern the planet and that's the same message these guys are saying see if you want to bring peace to the planet it's basically man's version of utopia it's it's a the lie that we don't need Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, to bring peace to the planet. And that's the only way it's going to happen. That's in the Millennial Kingdom. It's basically their version of a pseudo millennium, right? So after the rapture, and you get all those nasty people in the way, they're restraining influence, <laughs> those Christians. Yep. Hold, as Salt they, light's gone. Yep, as, they, as they would say, holding up the harmony of the earth, right? As soon as they're gone, uh, these people, that, that they, they think it's a good thing. Get rid of those troublemakers. 
finally got finally. rid of those troublemakers. We can advance, right? Now we can finally bring in this, you know, there's different names for it, uh, New World Order. That is not a, uh, I remember I came across this in our study on Satanism. Uh, that is actually a, a term that's been around for a long time in early forms of Satanism called Theosophy from Madame Blavatsky back in the day. And they were referring to, and Theosophy believes Satan's a good guy. Uh, Lucifer the light and he's come to show us how to bring peace to the planet we don't need Jesus that's the we're going but anyway so that's way back in the days when that was so new world order uh, age of utopia age of Aquarius remember that song right yep. what they're talking about man will do it and we'll get it anyway so these people are part of that camp that's the same message from these lying aliens really repackaged demons are saying so they think it's a good thing that's what they want so here's my point so then visibly appear or disappear uh, go up Christians, and then they use either actual technology that we are not privy to, but this alien-like way advanced would probably freak us out if we could see what they really got. And that's coming from the military guys. Interview. And then, uh, oh, and or Project Bluebeam. And, and the deception is set. The deception is set because it, you, and you think about human nature, human nature in a time of crises is you will gravitate towards pretty much any excuse just to maintain your sanity. Yeah, in order. I mean, right? absolutely. And that's just yep. human basic nature. Yep. But think about this. This isn't just some excuse. Think about when the rapture happens, when people literally, and dare I say even in this context, visibly disappear. You can't stop it. It's going on. It's a global shock and awe. Right? You better come up with something real fast to explain that away. And and, and again, this isn't just some lame excuse. Right? You could probably come up on the scene. People are in such shock and awe. You could say, I know what happened to your loved one. Uh, this was some secret uh, agent uh, program from Jeff Bezos of Amazon. <laughs> exactly. And, uh, you know, these are the people who resisted the Amazon Prime. You know, what are you coming? Whatever, people right? go, okay, yeah, I'll believe that. Just to maintain sanity. This isn't just some lame excuse. It's been slowly, methodically foisted upon us, started 150 years ago or more with the live evolution, Charles Darwin, moving forward just to get that mindset to lead to the next mindset. Now that there's aliens evolution out there, and then you could explain this away. But, but uh, as soon as that happens, here comes spaceships in whatever form, right? Maybe they land on the White House lawn or whatever, and other places around the world. Mondo, people will fall for it just like that. And, and this is what demons are doing. They'll never equate it with even the rapture. No. And, There's and, been and so then, much blindness. Right. And then, well, and dare I say, you know who's, a, who's at fault in this too? The church. Yep. Who refuses to teach on prophecy. Yep. You think that's by chance? Nope. No way. Yep. No way. The time when this is getting so close to explain away the rapture, for decades now, we've had the church that will not even preach on that. Or some that would say, you and I uh, are complete wackos uh, and we need to symbolize. Get ready!